What's going on everybody? Zare back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about my plans for the one and only World of Warcraft Classic. So, initially, you know, launch is on Monday, and I can imagine a lot of servers are going to, you know, have it rough, and I can imagine some servers not having it so rough. Anybody who's probably around the medium to, you know, not quite so full range is going to be probably a relatively decent experience. I think it's going to be a little bit of a <laughs> a little bit of a hiccup as it always is with a new launch for Blizzard. I think Legion was literally their only like expansion that's done that was done very smoothly. I don't remember BFA being too terrible, but it wasn't nearly as smooth as Legion. But on my server, which is Pagel, USPVE, there is a strong possibility that the first couple of hours are going to be pretty rough. Queue times are going to go through the roof, and I'm really excited to not be a part of that. Um, my wife and I are going to be having date night on Monday, so that's the plan. We've got 12 days for myself to not go to work, just hang out at home, and 10 of those 12 days are going to be spent in Azeroth, so I'm probably going to jump in the fray somewhere between 2 and 4 a.m. Tuesday morning on Pagel, and it's just going to be a blast. I'm going to love every second of it. Moving on to, you know, post level 60. Once I get level 60, obviously, you know, within the first week, the first thing I'm going to be doing is gaining reputation for Hydraxian Water Lords. Getting that to honored is going to be crucial, and thankfully, it's fresh enough in my mind to know that, and after discussing with some guildies, it's going to be pretty quickly doable. Uh, as soon as you hit level 60, it probably won't take you more than half a day, maybe a full evening to just get online, knock out that rep, and then once you get Hydraxian rep to honored, you'll be able to, you know, douse runes and molten core so that'll be done that'll make a big way for me um as far as you know my contribution to the guild and another one that i'm going to be doing following that immediately is going to be getting all of my professions to 300 now i haven't quite decided yet if that's going to include things like fishing or cooking because admittedly cooking is you know not amazing in classic. The buffs are only you know 10, 15 minutes usually. I think there might be one or two that are, are, are longer than that. But I'm not entirely sure I want to do cooking. Um, it's great for entry level leveling, but I just don't know if I want to take the time to do cooking while I'm leveling. I'm probably just going to do you know obviously first aid is going to be a must while leveling for me. And the professions that I've chosen are going to be herbalism and mining the there's going to be an explanation on the back end of this during phase two but for right now 300 herbalism 300 mining which won't be too difficult if i'm one of the first 60s on the server i can just hop on my mount and just start riding around town and just start maxing out my professions now that being said i'm probably not going to even touch professions as i'm leveling 1 to 60, won't even bother getting them outside of first aid. Once I get to 60 and knock out Hydraxian Waterlords, I will probably go back to Iron Forge, Stormwind, wherever, get my professions, and then just ride out in the entry level zones and just ride around and do what I need to do. The next thing on my list is farming dungeon keys. Now, a lot of people may have forgotten, but I have not. Dungeon keys are a big deal back in Vanilla WoW and they're going to be a big deal in Classic. The person who has the most dungeon keys can be very easily just post something in trade chat or looking for group chat or general chat or whatever chat rooms we're going to have in Classic and say hey I have you know Strathome key such and such I have you know BRD key such and such I have whatever keys and people are going to be like oh okay well then I will come with you or you can come with us kind of a thing because you can cut down on our you know our time our progression time through certain zones so those are going to be a big deal 
And I can knock out two birds with one stone here because while also farming dungeon keys, I can also do the MC attunement. I can also, you know, potentially do the Oni attunement. There are things that I'll be able to do alongside that. And those are going to be the two big ones following the dungeon keys is getting attuned for MC, which admittedly is pretty, pretty easy. You literally just you know, hop your way through BRD, jump in the lava, swim across, and voila, there you go. Um, getting the Oni attunement is going to be a little bit more taxing. Uh, probably going to be working with uh, the guild. Most of us are probably going to get level 60 within the first week. And we're going to basically just get together five, ten man groups and just knock this out as fast as we can. Um, the Alliance actually have it easy because we can actually start that quest chain around 54, I believe. And it's pretty straightforward as long as you're not trying to, you know, run everybody through VRD at once, obviously. You do it in different five main groups and you can just cycle people through. And while they're low in their mid upper 50s, BRD is actually a really great place for them to gain experience and also do some, you know, elite quests, which is pretty awesome. Moving on beyond the attunements, however, and then it's just going to be starting the pre-raid best in slot. Um, my next video for next week is going to cover pre-raid bis for hunters. And there's a lot of websites out there, uh, Classic Wild Bis and others, but I found one and that I, a friend of mine has recommended to me. I discovered it on my stream, and it's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. I will leave a link down below. It's called 60 Upgrades. And literally, you can compare and contrast different builds. You can even create your own custom EPs. It is quite phenomenal. And depending on how, what you're, how you weigh your stats, but I literally just plugged in the default Hunter EPs, and what I found astonished me. My memory is as good as I thought it was. There are so many people who say, you know, this and this and this and this and this are the best of slot for hunters. And I'm thinking, man, I'm pretty sure Beast Stalker four set bonus was a thing. Let me go back and look. Sure enough, I was right. I have 940 attack power unbuffed, and I have well over 12.5% crit chance unbuffed, and I have what 3400 health and mana unbuffed I mean we're talking some pretty serious firepower just at entry level rating and I have a you know eight nine percent no I have a over nine percent crit chance thanks to the dwarf racial it's absolutely incredible so I'll be doing a video on that next week the level 60 mount is going to be the next priority after my pre-raid miss and after that that, I think the 60 mounts just going to happen organically. I'm not going to go out of my way to say, hey, I'm getting my 60 mount today kind of a thing. I'm just going to just let that happen organically. To me, it's not that big of a difference because I won't be doing a whole lot of traveling on foot. Wherever I go, I'm going to be on a flying mount, on the Griffin, flight pass, get to where I need to go, right straight there, whether it's farming for the Eye of Shadow, Rune Cloth, Fell Cloth, which will be what I will be doing in Phase 1 to gain money. That's what I'm going to be doing in Phase 1. And I'll be down there probably several hours a day doing my thing, selling Eyes of Shadow to, you know, people on the auction house out, you know, outside of, you know, giving it to people on the guild at discounted, pr discounted rate. And also rating. Just entry-level rating. That's that, that about covers it for, for phase one. You know, you, you get your pre raid bis, you get your 60 mount, you do the gold farm, you find some way to make some kind of amount of money for your 60 mount, and et cetera, et cetera. And then you start raiding. And admittedly, those first five or six issues, getting to level 60, getting Hydraxian Rep, 300 professions, you know, attunements, keys, all that stuff, you know, is what has to happen in order for me to be successful in order to assist my guild in being successful. So, those are my plans for Phase 1. Now, as far as Phase 2 goes, because admittedly, Phase 2 is going to come faster than I think a lot of us realize. Because when we're doing Phase 1, we're all still trying to get to level 60. And whether that takes you know a week in my case, or a month in other people's cases, or maybe the majority of Phase 1 in general, when they get the level 60 and they start doing things and they start knocking out their their list of whatever to do next thing you know you look up and it's like oh god it's been a month 
we've got two months left and then you know poof here comes phase two so it's gonna come it's gonna come it's gonna come around the quarter pretty quick so my my goals in phase two um right around the time phase two launches i will become a full con full-time content creator uh right now you know i'm having to do things basically is the it is is as I begin to, you know, shake off my tendencies and start doing things, you know, and this starts feeling a little bit more natural to me, we'll be able to come into our come into our own by the end of phase one and start of phase two, and then you know, as far as in game goals, I have to update my best in slot with Diamond drops. You know, there's so much gear that comes from Diamond for a lot of classes, uh, for the hunter especially. There's a two handed weapon. The there's a couple of rings there's also a helmet that comes from there there's just a lot of things that I have to turn my attention to dire mall for and not to mention that if they don't change the dire mall farm for hunters I'll be doing that a lot that'll be that'll turn into my new gold farm is the dire mall farm but we got to see how they how they adapt with that now the biggest project that I'm going to take on during phase two is leveling my second accounts 10 level 35 alts um, I have to be able to get online do what I need to do level my level 35 alts and that's gonna be the end of it now the problem I'm having right now is the fact that our server is a full status I'm hoping somewhere between now and phase 2 that they up the population or people abandon it and leave Pagel I'm hoping something like that's gonna happen I hope not a mass exodus, obviously, but enough to where I can get on and increase my, you know, my character pool, to, you know, 10 characters, all going to be level 35 alts so I can get max level professions. I'm going to turn each one of them into alchemists and tailors. That way I can crank out as much moon cloth, as much arcanite bars as humanly possible. Since there are daily resets on those, once I have all those set up, and admittedly, if I'm multi-boxing two tunes with my level 60 hunter who will have an you know, improved aspect of the pack, I should be able to get to level 35 within a day, day and a half at, at best. It won't be very difficult, especially once I get the, by the time I get to my, you know, second or third level 35, I should be pretty quick to remember the routes, knock everything out, and... Another thing that's going to be really cool here is I don't have to farm all that stuff. The guild is going to be able to provide everything that I need for getting my tunes reps to, or, or excuse me, getting my tunes professions to 300 and then cranking out as much Arcanite and tailoring. Because that's obviously Arcanite Mooncloth, that's only going to benefit the guild. So the faster I get those guys to 35, the faster we get them to professions to 300, the faster I can start cranking out stuff that'll assist us not only in best in slots for warriors and etc cetera, etc cetera, but also help us to prepare for you know hand of rags and thunder furies and you know you know x x x amount of moon cloth bags and stuff like that to increase you know our guild bank which admittedly is not official it's gonna have to be somebody's alt that does that but it, it, it would all go a very long way to making our guild that much more successful the other two things that will be focused on in phase two are going to be just continue raid progression and then finally be at some point when I'm done with those level 35 alts begin the Argent Dawn rep farm. Argent Dawn is something that takes a long time to do and the sooner you get ahead of the curve on this the better. The sooner you get started the sooner you knock out the the initial you know neutral to friendly to honored progression the better. I'm guessing by some time around, if I start out somewhere in the middle of phase two, maybe even towards the end of phase two, I'm willing to bet you that I could probably have honored and or even revered somewhere during phase three. Because phase three doesn't really change a whole lot. Once you have your pre raid bis by the end of phase two, if you have pre raid bis by the end of phase two, I'm talking everything, everything through. Oni, MC, and Dire Maul, there's going to be not a lot else you have to do in the dungeons, aside from maybe helping out the occasional guildy or friend, because at that point, it's literally just every time a new raid wing comes out, you go in, you knock it out. That's all there is to it. 
Now, obviously, there's more to that than you know meets the eye. There's a lot more that goes with that. But honestly, if your goal is to go in and to get top of the line gear every single week in the raids, however your guild distributes gear is going to make that completely dependent on how fast you, your friends, your guildies all get geared out. Even if you have MC and Oni on farm at the end of Phase 2, I promise you, even though BWL comes out in Phase 3, you're still going to do Oni and Rag. It makes no sense not to keep and continue to do it, because obviously you need the cloak, you need everybody to have the cloak from, from Oni for BWL, Hand of Rag continues to drop, Thunder Fury uh, continues to drop. All of these things can only benefit you, and those raids are continuously and always at the forefront not only for really great gear because some classes some there some bis slots or excuse me some best in slot pieces drop from mc and drop from oni and that's the only thing you wear throughout the entirety of classic i mean hell there's a blue helm for the feral druids they wear it all the way to next so that's that's pretty much it guys that's that's my that's my initial goals for classic and I hope you guys will join me in the comment section and tell me what your goals and aspirations are. Let me know what your phase one goals are going to be. Do you like my goals? Do you think I'm a little too ambitious? Do you think I need to dial back a couple of things? I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section. Love you guys as always. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel. Be sure to click the links down in the description below for Twitch for live streaming. And other places on social media to follow me. Love you as always. See you in the next video. Sarah's out.